My name is Steve, and I work at Sunrun, which is the nation's largest residential solar provider. We're here at JOIN today to tell you a little bit about our implementation of GCP and Looker, and specifically how we've used federated management, i.e. hub and spoke, to balance the need to govern data and make sure that it's carefully controlled with the pace of a modern business and um, the need for analysts to keep up with rapidly evolving business requirements. Um, myself and my colleague Prabhu will be telling you a little bit about our company, jumping into some of the challenges that we have solved for and that have led us to go down the path of implementing Hub and Spoke with Looker, um, to walk through the technical architecture that we have chosen to implement. And then last but not least, to go through some of the lessons that we've learned along the way. Um, it's no secret to anyone in this audience that it's very challenging to uh, manage governance at scale without creating bottlenecks. And we hope that some of the lessons we've learned uh, can be useful to uh, those of you who are interested in doing the same. And so with that, let me go ahead and turn the floor over to my colleague Prabhu to introduce himself, and then we'll jump right in. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Prabhu. I'm a Sunrunner since 2015. I'm a lead data engineer here. Uh, I am the responsible for implementation of GCP and Looker at Sunrun, along with the strategy team. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about the technical implementation and architecture, and then some of the key lessons learned. At Sunrun, we have the audacious goal of creating a planet run by the sun. We're attempting to bring residential solar to the masses and offering low cost, resilient, environmentally friendly uh, power to those who need it. Before we jump into GCP and Looker, just to give you a sense of um, our company's background and where we're at in our journey, Sunrun has 309,000 customers. Uh, we're growing at a rapid pace, uh, roughly 22% year over year in the past year. We are in 22 states and we are, you know, moving with a very data driven strategy. We have a lot of data. We're voracious about consuming data in our meetings. And we try to run a scientific business where we're constantly iterating. As a result, we have a really complex technical architecture under the hood. Um, to give you a rough sense of the scale and um, the baseline that we're operating off of, we have 650 data pipelines ingesting data from a variety of different tools, a few examples being Salesforce, Workday, and Oracle. We have many different people using our centralized tools, of which Looker is one of the primary tools, along with Anaplan and a handful of others. Last month, we had 450 people using Looker for a grand total of 90,000 minutes. And that number is growing month over month as we continue to um, settle in to a centralized infrastructure at Sunrun. As we'll talk about in a little bit, um, that has not always been the norm at our company. Uh, when Prabhu and I joined uh, five years ago, um, focusing on analytics and process, um, we had a much different landscape. And GCP and Looker have been integral to our overall shift as a company. Um, and I look forward to telling you more about what that looks like. When Prabhu and I joined the company in 2015, we had some real headwinds to deal with in terms of centralized analytics. Specifically, um, most of the company's reporting was being managed out of 
Excel, Salesforce, and a variety of other non-shared dashboards. The dashboards that existed were spread across multiple tools, were largely being managed in silos by differing teams, had very little collaboration in terms of the underlying code so that as people left the company, they could stand the test of time so that we could have as many eyes on the stability of the dashboards as possible, and so that we could have as many people contributing as possible. Also, in some of our key areas, like managing the velocity of the business, we didn't always have alignment between different major functions like sales and operations in terms of key metrics, i.e. having a single source of truth. And finally, We had an environment where people were comfortable consuming data in platforms. But although we have always had a lot of very smart people and a lot of uh, tenacious effort going into analytics, we had very few that were comfortable coding to create prototypes using languages like SQL, R, and Python. And a piece of that was um, them not understanding how to use the tools to do so, i.e. having a really fast, smooth track for them to pull data out. And a piece of that also has been, we simply haven't had that many analysts at at all points in our evolution um, that have had that capability. And, um, you know, if we ask the five whys, if we zoom out and think about the underlying reasons that this was happening. Um, I think for me, it comes down to uh, three things more so than anything else. One, it's really hard. We had a small centralized BI team managing the majority of shared dashboards at the company. And it's really hard to have um, a centralized team keep up with the pace of a early stage, rapidly evolving company that's changing its definitions very quickly, that's ballooned from a couple hundred people to a couple thousand people in a rapid period of time, and um, that doesn't have close uh, collaboration from the business, that doesn't have a culture of um, teams leaning in together, um, business starting analyses, um, and then stability and governance on the other side. And so in light, and I guess one, one last point that I think is relevant is we actually did not have a modern BI stack like Google Cloud Platform that was very easy to code from in a number of different front ends and very performant. And so, you know, as a company who's trying to run all of our meetings based off of a single source of truth with targets And really to have as simple of a uh, analytics platform, as few dashboards, as few places to look at the data as possible, and alignment between the different functions, um, we decided to essentially reboot our entire centralized BI strategy uh, several years ago using Google Cloud Platform and Looker. And I'm really happy to report that... um, We're in a far healthier place today and that um, we both have um, a lot um, more agility as a business. Our time to insight in terms of building out shared dashboards is a lot shorter than it was, but also a lot more collaboration. We have uh, successfully, I think, turned to operating as a single team where our data engineers Many of our core analysts who are responsible for leadership insights and um, our end users are all using the same stuff, which is a huge win just from a day-to-day management uh, perspective. Um, In addition, uh, so I guess actually to pivot, some tactical things that have enabled this transition and really... uh, led to this ramp up of centralization are that 
we have made a point to uh, train up and enable our organization to code early stage prototypes, to use SQL, to use R, to use Python, to start projects, and to develop a pipeline where we then stabilize and bring those prototypes into a governed framework once um, we have the degree of maturity and the bandwidth needed to do so, which has been huge in terms of our overall kind of buy-in and velocity through the central pipeline. Also, um, I think that Looker has been instrumental to enabling that in the sense that the Git-based um, management, i.e. giving individual analysts the capacity to develop in a silo and then publish to a central model, um, and some of, the, uh, some of the advanced features like refinements in Looker uh, that allow us to have a central model and inherit it down have been really, uh, really crucial. Um, last but not least, um, we're feeling a lot better about our code standing the test of time these days in the sense that we have a handful of derived tables uh, that have been uh, carefully vetted so that at its base layer, data is easily um, accessible in a transformed format. We are working really hard to document and coach in terms of how those base tables function. And we're running a huge amount of our shared dashboards out of a shared code base in LookML and Looker, which in turn allows multiple people to contribute um, and us to have a code base that we can audit, we can uh, revert changes on, and that we can also um, make fungible to other people, uh, you know, pass ownership over and uh, pass contributions around as time goes on. And so um, Prabhu will be talking a little bit more next about the technical architecture under the hood that has um, fostered some of these changes. Um, and then we'll jump back into uh, some of our key lessons. Thank you, Steve, for the high-level overview of how Looker transformed our BI landscape. Here is the high-level architecture of Hub & Spoke at Sundred. From left to right, you can see the data ingested from heterogeneous sources like Oracle, Salesforce, Workday, etc. into a data hub. Data hub is our data warehouse. It's a BigQuery database uh, used for our data warehouse. The thing to notice here, there are two set of tables. One is the staged data tables, which is a raw data ingest from source systems. And then there is a derived data sets. In the derived tables, we transform the data and that act as a single source of truth for the entire data consumption. And moving further, these data sets are exposed as a departmental data. You know, the reason for that is like many of the data consumption or in fact, all of the data consumption from BigQuery is happening through this layer. So we layered all the security as part of this departmental data. You know, if you can notice the arrow on the right going into the looker and then arrow on the top is going as an external data consumption. So all the data consumption happens through these data sets. Coming into looker projects, so we divided the looker into two major projects. One, the hub, which is fully controlled by IT. Uh, it is built and managed by the core IT team and the spoke project. So the spoke project is managed by the power users actually. So you can see the, the hub projects, um, each of the modules in the hub projects, you can correlate to the data sets. So the reason it is built that way is, uh, you know, the first reason is the security. So the entire user security is, um, you know, encapsulated in that modules. And, uh, and pretty much, you know, the models and explorers built on top of the hub projects um, are also maintained by the core IT team. And uh, the, the major purpose of this models and explorers that is built on the hub is one, it is exposed to end users, um, I mean, uh, for the ad hoc analysis. Second, it is also inherited into spoke projects. So, you know, moving for the right, uh, talk about the spoke projects. That is where, you know, all of the power users are uh, landed in spoke projects. 
that is a playground for them you know um, to create prototype their own data data sets actually so uh, there are two major things uh, to speak about on the spoke side one they can inherit all of the models that is built on the hub side through refinements so that helps them to quickly stand up a model um, and then iterate through it um, you know in a fast phase manner and second they they are not just restricted to the data sets um, you know coming out of hub but they have an access to uh, entire enterprise data through the data as a service layer or they can even bring in their own data sets like they can ingest their own data sets and then connect the data to the model um, you know through the spoke project so so that sets them up you know for um, fast phase prototyping and um, they are also allowed to roll out their products to end users you know um, you know to name uh, majority of the dashboards the most widely used dashboards coming out of the spoke project so that's um, that's the key uh, for the success i would say and um, you know and, and on top of that this models and explores um, majority look similar to what is built on the hub side so so that way it is not much confusions for the end users and once they are firm up once they are you know ready to um, uh, ready to harden their products so that's when the it comes into picture and we have a we have a solid review process we review their components built and then if if it makes sense and if if the components are like core part of the core model it can be exposed to other departments we migrate them back to the hub and then we make it like, like source of truth for the entire organization actually so that's the spoke layer and it it gets used for the power users and then the dashboards and everything is built on top of that is um, is rolled out to the end users actually so these are the key factors you know the they are the major success factors for the looker at sunrun mm. i would like to share some of the key lessons that we learned throughout this journey along, along with my colleague steve uh, as you know collaboration is hard it requires a lot of trust you know so we are able to achieve that through an extensive training and documentation around gcp and looker and we also have like shared responsibilities between the core bi team or core it team and the uh, stakeholders and we ensure like you know through a process and control as a guidelines you know things are not out of control and more more than anything i would say the one team as a one team as a culture is the reason for our success i would like steve to talk about that later and um, you know it's really worth it when you have 20 plus analysts you know from business and core it team operate out of the same code base and you know with the with the pool of development responsibilities it really sets the fast phase development um, you know uh, from it side we just need to ensure the code tra- code transferability data consistency and end user simplicity when we zoom out and look at the journey we've been down um, i would agree that um, building a one team culture and trust has been the most important part and the most challenging part um, and when we say um, challenging I think it's just worth acknowledging that um it's very easy to have the business on one side wanting to move extremely fast and ignoring governance, ignoring code controls, ignoring code transferability, and also ignoring the ability of data models to scale and be as performant as they can be with engineering support. and on the other side it's easy for centralized teams to kind of lock in and um build complicated models and not um you know get the level of agility needed to keep up in a rapidly changing business world and switching the paradigm from the tools that have been available in the past um you know kind of data silo tools if you will like um tableau that will um you know allow for very rapid construction but don't have the same governance controls under the hood or some of the older school uh bi tools that have really strong governance controls but don't have the same level of agility requires a bit of a leap of faith it requires empathy on both sides meaning the business understanding and um acknowledging 
that there is a lot of value to having central models and having the robustness and uh, stability that comes with. And also on the engineering side, an acknowledgement that a lot of times things move extremely fast, are very agile, and um, you do need to blend the two. And I think that making changes like that can be um, can be scary. It's also um, kind of uncharted terrain in a lot of ways uh, for many many folks in the analytics world because it's a pretty big departure from how things have been done over the course of the last you know couple decades. And fundamentally, like what we've learned, where I think we've been able to succeed, as Prabhu mentioned, is we've spent a lot of time trying to learn um, where each other's heads are at and respect that everybody at the table has good points. Everybody is working hard and is smart. And there truly is a need to balance the two, which involves spending time and learning about, you know, everybody's perspectives. Um, that time has manifested itself at Sunrun in the form of daily meetings, weekly meetings, um, lunches, you know, and lots of strategy sessions where we just kind of approach the pros and cons of every situation and try to think through them together. Um, secondarily, um, I think we've developed a lot more comfort with kind of federating our model, moving uh, some of the, like, permissions and uh, prototyping control to the kind of analyst community by putting the guardrails Prabhu mentioned in place, uh, specifically having things like GitHub so we can easily roll back, having automated UAT so we can make sure before we push any code to prod, um, we have checks in place that'll make sure that um, you know, it's passing kind of red flag tests, um, using things like Looker's content validator in order to make sure that nothing's breaking again, um, just more from like a front end dashboard perspective, having pull requests, having a system where even if it's a prototype, we have a more senior member of the team look at code prior to, um, you know, it going out into the wild so that it doesn't break stuff. And then finally, making sure that as prototypes emerge in kind of a spoke environment, the uncontrolled environment, um, our IT partners on the hub side are involved, consulting, aware, and ultimately um, on a track where they can ingest it into hub so that you create a virtuous cycle. I think that that feedback loop of prototype feeds governance which serves as the foundation for the next generation of prototyping is really exciting. And um, the infrastructure to do so with Looker refinements, um, its Git architecture, and um, you know some of the controls I mentioned is really uh, unique in terms of what I've experienced in, in my career as an analyst and program manager. So I um, highly encourage everyone to um, not take that for granted and uh, lean into kind of the process side. Um, I think the two other lessons that um, I want to flag are um, that we've decided at Sunrun, as, as Prabhu mentioned, we have data as a service, meaning there's nothing stopping an analyst from going in to one of our core tables and pulling the data into any number of front ends. That's actually been an intentional choice for early stage prototypes. We believe the data itself should be governed and carefully curated. And we really want to organically win people over to Looker as the best tool. And some of that involves, you know, making sure they give it a chance. But a lot of that involves showing them why these specific attributes we've been talking about are better than a lot of the alternatives um, and how, you know, we can get out of a world of tools breaking when people leave the company, of stuff being wrong because we don't have the automation in place to check to see whether it's right with these more modern solutions. Um, but then secondarily to once we 
are confident per feedback from our end users and initial adoption from key influencers that we have a good tool to work really carefully on the business side to drive accountability to the numbers. Meaning it's not enough to build a dashboard. We really believe in building processes, things like having weekly meetings where people have to speak to the numbers, their targets versus their actuals. Um, you know, on a regional basis, on a national basis, so on and so forth. And creating that framework around the data itself where you're identifying what matters with leadership, you're putting early stage prototypes in the hands of end users, you're validating that you have a product people want to use, but then you're driving that business hygiene, that business discipline through um, through process, um, and kind of weave it into the DNA of your business is maybe the most impactful thing you can do. Um, and then I think the last point I'll make from more of a technical perspective is um, our analytics have evolved immensely as we've built up um, programming muscle amongst our analyst community, uh, specifically as we have um, onboarded and trained more and more analysts to use SQL, R, and Python um, for shared dashboarding purposes um, with eyes to predictive analytics and things like that in the future. And um, a piece of that is the power of the languages themselves. Um, We don't need people who have immense mastery of these languages to distill a ton of value in terms of using SQL to look at tens of millions of rows and analyze data at a scale that just isn't possible um, outside, you know, if you're, say, using Excel or Google Sheets. Um, Secondarily, um, because Looker is so integrated with SQL in particular, leaning in to those fundamentals has lent itself to learning LookML. And really like what we've kind of framed up as we teach people is SQL is the bedrock language you use to pull stuff out. It also is the engine that makes Looker go. And LookML, you know, obviously is a dashboarding and abstraction language on top. But being able to think of accessing the stack from the data as a service layer and the LookML layer on the spoke side, really gives you the best of all worlds. So you can say, hey, is there a central model that does what I need it to do? Great. If not, is there one that's close that I can quickly refine using spoke? Awesome. If there is, if not, I still have the tools to go back to the source and quickly uh, spin up a custom solution and uh, get it to my end users in a matter of hours, even if it's not perfect. And as long as we have that on-ramp back to governance for the stuff that sticks, um, everybody wins. That is that virtuous cycle. I hope you found these lessons useful. Um, That is our summary of what we've learned with Hub and Spoke. And uh, thank you for listening to this presentation. It's really fun working with Looker. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. Thank you for this opportunity.